Okay. All right. So your, your cylinder is probably the easiest one to work with. So we're going to pull that out. We're going to leave the uh, ellipse that forms the top of the cylinder in place. <clears throat> you can see I have tape on the back where it was held down while I was doing the background. Okay. And then um, again, we have some weights around, right? And you define what, what a weight is, obviously, okay? Um, these could just be rocks or stacks of coins or you know, anything that has a little bit of weight to it. It's kind of oh, coins. Huh? Oh, sorry. I was like thinking of what I could use at home as weights when you say coins. Yeah, I mean, you, you can even just go outside and get a handful of rocks. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter really. Um, as long as they're you know, something that's plain, it's not going to make a big mess. All right. And so. If we look at um, some examples really quickly, right? Um, I want to talk about the things that we're trying to achieve here. So this is a little bit different, but um, the essence of the forms is the same, okay? And so, you know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to develop the core shadows, right? While retaining the reflected light and the direct light, okay? Does that make sense, you guys? <clears throat> Hello? Can you guys see what I'm sharing? Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah. makes sense. And so um, I want everybody to kind of stick with the same lighting scheme, right? We're all working with our, our light from the upper left to the lower right, okay? And we're not working with cash shadows, okay? So don't worry about that. This is from a little different assignment, but these are good examples for us to use just as reference, okay? And this is posted in, um, in your shell also, okay? I'll post the things that we're actually working on in the show a little later today uh, for reference material too. But <clears throat> for right now, right, what I'm trying to do is develop a core shadow, right? A gradient from the core shadow into the reflected light. I wanna maintain contrast on the edge on both sides, right? <clears throat> um, if we look at the, the gradient, there's, you know, there's two of them really, or there's one that goes from light to dark and then back to light again, all right? Um, but I have a gradient that's going from the direct light into the core, right? And then from the core to the reflected light, okay? And, you know, uh, the, the core runs the length of that cylinder, okay? It runs the length of the cone. It's kind of a crescent shape here for obvious reasons. And then we have um, somewhat triangular shapes here because we're working with these planes, okay? So, you know, in essence, that's what we're trying to achieve. And what we wanna do is make sure that we maintain contrast between our subject and its background. Because once you lose that, you lose your edge and everything flattens out, okay? So you have to kind of keep all this stuff in mind as you're working and, and do your, your peekaboo every once in a while so you know um, what you have and kind of where, where and when to stop. Okay. Does that make sense you guys? Yeah. 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 All right. Yes. So let's go back to the demo. Okay. <clears throat> so we're working with our cylinder and what you're going to find is that it's, it's handy for some of these forms to have um, some secondary stencils. Okay. And what I mean by that is um, just other pieces of Bristol board, maybe from a, a previous assignment that you worked on that um, maybe you had to redo, if you had to redo anything, that means you have um, some scrap Bristol board, right? Um, if you don't care about um, something that you have turned in that you've already had graded, you could cut that into um, strips of, of Bristol board. I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste a new piece of Bristol board. It could also just be like right now, 
um, in your mail, right? You're probably getting, everybody is, tons of election mail shit, right? And oh, yeah. God. yeah, a lot of that stuff is printed on cardstock, which is a little bit heavy, right? Almost like Bristol board. And you could use that too, okay? What I'm getting at is if we look at this, right? Here's an example from, from last night, okay? <clears throat> If we look at this, you know, essentially that's a that's a straight line, right? You guys follow me? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what I use the, the, the word line kind of quote unquote. I don't want an edge, but it is linear in that it runs the, the length of the cylinder, right? You guys follow me? Yeah. And so um, it, I can I can develop a system where I have a little more control over my spray pattern and I can create specific shapes and or suggestions of lines, right? By using secondary stencils, um, like what I'm gonna do right now. And what I mean by that is if I have this over my cylinder, okay? And there's space underneath, right? And I spray at an angle, that's gonna help me develop a soft, straight line. Does everybody understand? Uh, yes. As, yes. Right. Good. As opposed to where this is laying flat on the surface and I have a very distinct edge. You guys see that? Right? That, that yes. is dark because this part of the stencil is laying flat. Okay. This line is soft because I had another stencil laying above it and I was spraying at an angle and utilizing what we would call overspray or underspray to develop a the suggestion of a line right that is very soft okay so, the extra stencil you hold it in your hand rather than setting it down well I don't want to hold it in my hand because my hands are shaky and I've already got enough stuff going on so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use you guys have one of these in your in your kit, right? It's a kneaded eraser with me. Yes. Right. Yeah. The cool thing about it, like it's a great tool, but like you can also tear it into pieces. Okay. And so these pieces work really great for what we're doing. And I can use them just like little wads of silly putty or whatever to hold those secondary stencils. Um, at a, at a um, steady, stationary, static um, level above the surface. So if I do this and I lay that down like that with me, I don't have to worry about me yes. fumbling around and, and touching the surface of this while I'm spraying. Because that's really the, the danger of what I'm doing right now, right? Does that make sense, Amanda? Yeah, thank you. How would you do that for the cylinder? I mean, not, I think it's called the cylinder, um, the circle. Oh, I'll, I'll show you. I'm going to get to all of them. Okay. You just got to be patient with me. Okay. <laughs> Who was that? Mia. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll get to that. We're going to, we're actually going to go to the sphere next. So we're going to jump around a little bit and you'll understand why. Um, but um, you would use your, um, the cutout, right, from your sphere. It has the curve that you want, so you're gonna use that, and I'll, I'll get to it, okay? Let me do this first, all right? So I got my stuff. Um, I probably need a little more water in here. It's been sitting for a little while this afternoon, so I'm gonna add some water. And, you know, just FYI, this is touching the, you know, pad of my pinky finger. So that's how much space is between this surface and that top edge. Okay. With me, everybody, it could be less or it could be more. It's yes. somewhat dependent on how many times you go past and how, uh, how much material you lay down. So you have to, that's the thing that you have to watch. Okay. Because even with it being elevated the way that it is, if I go across it too many times, 
or lay down too much material, it's still going to create a sharp line. Does everybody understand? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. So I'm going to load my brush. I'm going to expel some material. I'm going to test it out. I've been getting a lot of bigger spots out of this for some reason. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm just going to spray it an angle. I'm going to go across and back a couple of times and just start to establish okay, a somewhat of a distinct quote unquote line. Okay. And I didn't spray very much. You guys can see, right? There's not a whole lot of material there. And let me lower the, the camera some. Is that better? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so I haven't laid very much stuff down. Okay. But I want to look. Okay. And so I'm going to lift this up. And you can see that, like, I've got you know, I've kind of isolated my spray pattern. It stops. It's pretty distinct right here. Does everybody see that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. But I'm not, I'm not really, I don't think I'm done with this secondary stencil yet. So I'm going to do a little bit more, but I, you know, I can't stress to you enough, like don't get carried away here because you'll create an edge and you'll never be able to get rid of that edge. Okay. So Go across it a couple times, make sure you're spraying at an angle. You want to take advantage of that um, underspray, and then I'll come at it straight down and try to develop just right in the core. And then I'll pick it up and kind of look at what I've got again. Right. Now that looks pretty good, a good place to start. And at this point, you know, I'll, I'll probably pull this away. Now, the fact is, is that. The cylinder is pretty easy. I probably don't have to do it that way. <clears throat> but what if it's a really narrow cylinder, right? Or a really small cylinder? It's harder for me to establish an edge or a line on a smaller, more narrow form. And so if my, imagine if my cylinder were only this wide, right? What I just did would be the perfect way to deal with that. Does everybody understand? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now the rest of it, I should be able to just kind of do freehand, okay, by concentrating my spray pattern toward my reflected light, right? Because it's going to be darker than my direct light, always. Make sure that your stuff is sitting flat so that you can keep that nice edge. And then I'll come back and concentrate on the center of my core. Okay, and then I'm just going to continue to develop the core into the reflected light. I've got to make sure that I maintain the contrast that I have between the reflected light and the background, right? Because that's what ultimately 
gives me the edge of the object. Okay, so don't get carried away without doing your peek a bit. Okay, and I need something over here because if there's nothing there, then there's a lack of mass <coughs> and volume with respect to the actual form, right? So I'll just kind of very lightly lay something in there to give it mass, making sure that I don't get as dark as I am on this side. This always has to be darker. Does everybody understand? Yes. Yeah. Why? Why is because it? Because the light isn't shining over there, or is it, it light. isn't showing? Right. It's reflected light. It's dark. It's dimmer. It doesn't have the strength of direct light. Okay. And so what I want to do now is move my weights and just take a look, see what I've got going. With me? Yeah. 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 Like a cylinder, right? Does that make sense, you guys? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Right. And you know, at this point, I would probably stop and move to another area. Okay. Now, um, I could do my cone. All right. But I want to let this dry, and I don't want to have to worry about like a knuckle or something in there. Okay. I can't do this because I've got to cover that up to do that. So. I'm going to take this stencil and I'm just going to set it aside. And I'm going to come over to this stencil. Okay, right? So I have my other forms here. Lay this down. Make sure it's positioned. Take my sphere out. All right. And then this is for you, Mia. And you got the rest of you. All right. Thank you. You bet. Right. So here, right? And again, I love using the need an eraser for this because I can make it as thin as I want. It's tacky. It'll hold that thing in place. Okay. Um, I want the corner or the edge of the core shadow uh, to sit a little closer, right? Because it's going to be just a tad darker. So these are thinner so that that piece will lay down a little bit lower. Okay. Or I can push it down lower. Right. So I'm going to Set that on. Like so. With me? And yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This camera, right? Maybe you can see a little better. I'll try to drop this down so it's not it falling into my okay. Right. Okay. And so again, you can see that like my finger goes just underneath here, but then it tightens up on the 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 quote unquote corners. Okay. With me, everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now be patient. You know, it's easy. You guys have probably already figured out it's really easy to just kind of screw this up in one or two flicks of a toothbrush. Okay. And so, you know, take your time. All right, and then lay that down and just kind of softly spray like so. And then I'm going to just kind of pull this up. I don't want to move it because I don't want to set it back and not have it in the right spot. But you can see how I'm starting to establish that curved crescent shaped core there, right? With me, you guys? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, again, this is where you guys, a lot of you will try to choke because you'll go, you'll go across this thing too many times and you'll start to make an edge. Okay. And those edges are really, really hard to get rid of. So you got to be kind of careful here, right? Spray from above, spray at an angle, okay? And just go across it a couple times to establish the shape that you're after and then freehand it. So you see how I have a kind of a distinct curve, right? But it's soft, it's not an edge. Everybody with me? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. And then yeah. we'll finish that off by hand. And you know, it's good. Some people will tape their stuff down. I don't, I don't think that's a good idea, right? Um, I like to be able to move this stuff around, right? So if I want to work at it in a specific angle, I can. And here, you know, I'm really kind of pushing it in terms of working really close so that I have a lot of control over the pattern, right? And I can develop the core a little more distinctly. But you got to be careful because it's really easy to stick your finger down on the surface of that Bristol board. And once you do that, right, you know, you're kind of SOL, right? You guys know what that means, right? Shit out of luck. So out of luck. So, so out of luck. There you go. All right. The, the PG version. Super out of luck. I prefer Amanda's interpretation if you want to be, want me to be honest. Yeah, I wasn't sure to say it. It just kind of works better that way. Okay, now see how that's starting to look like a sphere with me? Yeah. Okay. And you just, you know, you just got to take your time, right? So I'll come back now and hit these areas where we know it's kind of wrapping around that upper edge. Right. You know, it takes patience, it takes kind of a delicate touch. You gotta just work at it slowly. Keep your brush moving all the time so that you don't create kind of spotty areas. I'll develop my reflected light by making the gradient a little broader. Okay. And then I need something here. If there's, if there's nothing there, there's nothing there, right? So I need to develop that, but I got to make sure that I, yes. that I don't lose contrast between that area and my reflected light. Okay. And then I need to just kind of soften the upper side of that gradient.
And when we do our peekaboo. And I can see there's an area here that I definitely need to go back and deal with, but I don't want to get too crazy, right? See how I have, like I'm losing a little bit of my contrast, right? You guys see that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> that's why um, you know, when we talked about doing your background, right? Take it, you know, to 80, 85%, 90% because now, right? Once I develop this, I'll leave this alone. I can then tune up the background to make that thing pop. Okay, does that make sense? So the background will get darkened just a little bit more and then those subjects will jump from the background. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah. Yeah. So you wouldn't wanna make it darker, the shape itself, you'd rather, it we're supposed to do the background darker? Yeah, because if I make, I mean, I, I can make, I can make the forms darker, but if I make the forms darker, then my reflected light, right, mm -hmm. starts to be in kind of in conflict with what's going on here, right? So um, if I darken my background just a little bit more, this will come back and end up being lighter and that reflected light will pop and that'll make the form look more volumetric. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah. So we would wait for it to dry and then tape it to the background again and spray exactly. the background? Exactly. So you kind of go back and forth, right? And so mm -hmm. you know, the background that you've done, if you haven't gone too dark, right, can always be darkened a little bit more. Now, if you have gone really dark with your background, right, then that may require that you do have to make your subjects a little bit darker, right, to... Um, to achieve the contrast that we want. <laughs> so that's where you kind of have to weigh um, what level of contrast you have and what you actually need, All right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we'll, let's see if we can go on to our, it's a little bit wet still. I'm gonna hit it with the hair dryer here. Okay, so uh, the cone, frankly, is, I think, the hardest one to do because you have this really tight um, core shadow. Okay. And so this is where those secondary stencils come in really handy. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to lift that out. Okay, so if we look at this as an example, right? You can see that your core, it goes all the way to the tip of the cone with me. And you need to have direct light and reflected light on both sides, okay? And so our direct light's a little bit weak here. We can see our reflected light pretty good, okay? Um, but that's why these cones are, are kind of hard to do because, you know, your toothbrush can't really spray this tiny little conical shape very easily without those secondary stencils. All right. Does everybody understand? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What we want to do is lay them out in a way where we're isolating our reflected light and our direct light right at the top of that cone. Okay. So again, I'm gonna go back to the medium eraser. These pieces are gonna be really tiny. 
and I'm going to lay them right along the edge of my stencil. Like so. Thinnest at the tip because that's where it needs to be the closest. Okay. And then another little piece on this side. The older your eraser is, the better it works too. It's not quite so sticky. And this is, you know, this side of your um, core is just a straight line down. It fans out this way. Everybody gets that, right? Yeah. Thank you. It's nice when you respond, especially if you don't know what I'm talking about. All right, so what I'm going to do is lay this down. So I'm just barely covering the edge, right, where that reflected light needs to be. Okay, so I'm just barely covering the edge of that. Okay. And then I'll take another piece. Okay. And I'm going to lay that just straight, like so. Okay. With me, everyone? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and here I'm gonna load my brush, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get rid of almost everything so that I have very little material coming out, just tiny, tiny little drops. Okay. I'm just going to spray from directly above, do a little bit of an angle. And then work my way down. And then I'll just peek at it. That looks pretty good. I want to Make it just a tiny bit darker. So come back, reload, expel. And then that should probably do it. All right. So I'll lift that out. That looks good. Okay, and I'll lift this up so you guys can kind of see. With me? Yeah. 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 That, right? See how there's a line of reflected light running along here and direct yeah. along there. Okay, and so now what I want to do is Develop that further. Okay. All Okay, and then probably right about now is when I want to pull that away. Right. Carefully remove this stuff. And then you can see when I lift this up, how that the tip of that cone is starting to kind of come to life as a volumetric form. With me, everybody? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now I should be able to kind of freehand it, okay, um, using you know fairly empty brush, so I have control over the spray pattern.
Hey, Chris. Yeah. yeah. I was kind of afraid to ask before, but um, uh, are we seeing the, the cone from a bottom view or from a top view? It's just slightly tilted back. Okay. Yeah, so from, from the bottom, I guess. Yeah. Right? Um, if it were from the top, you wouldn't see this ellipse. It would just be a curve. Yeah, that's why I had to ask. That's okay. Okay, now I see it. I, you know, this is just dirty from doing the background. So when I lift that out, it'll make more sense. Who's got the time? Two thirty. Okay, so sounds like it's time for a break. So let's see how we did. Right. So if I lift this up. I should reveal the development of a comb. With me? Does everybody see that? Yeah. Yes. yes. Almost like I know what I'm doing. Right now, again. My background could maybe be developed a little bit further, right? So that I have that reflected light a little more visible right along this edge, okay? But it's, it was left that way intentionally knowing that I wanna be able to fine tune things as I get closer to um, finishing it off. Does everybody understand? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Right? Now I need something. <laughs> There's nothing there, there's nothing there. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay some material in here for mass. And I'm in contrast to my reflected light. And the light logic on both of these is pretty consistent, right? I might need to darken my um, Direct light a little bit more. The contrast is pretty high right here. And some of that is because this is darker on this side than it is over here, right? So it makes this kind of pop. Does that make sense, you guys? So you'll see when I do that, that this thing will look a little bit more round because it'll weaken the core shadow just a little bit. With me, guys? See the difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. yes. No. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then, <clears throat> again, you know, some of your questions are good in that it's kind of hard to tell, like, what's going on because we have parts of our stencils that are in conflict to what we think we <clears throat> should be. So when I do that, boom, with me. Yeah. Yes. Yes. What I need to do here. Well, I needed just a very soft, light gradient, right, from the core across to that edge. Now, the smart thing to do is not to do it the way I'm doing it, but to lay this piece back in place, right, with me. And I should probably wait. Okay. I would imagine that it's going to be a little bit wet in some areas there, but. If I just lay it down and let me do it like so, I can isolate that ellipse. I can give the top of my cylinder the mass that we would expect it to have. And you wouldn't give the top uh, a coarse shadow, would you? No, it just has a soft gradient across it, right? Okay. See what happened? I lifted that up and it was wet and I smudged it. You can see how now there's mass to that, where there's sometimes you can't see stuff because it's camera quality. But yeah, it gives it a two D feel now. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. 
all right? Okay, so the same thing needs to happen here, but it should be darker and on the opposite side. Does everybody understand? So if I have light going this way, that means reflected light's coming back. So the darker part of the ellipse is on this side. You guys understand? Yeah. Yes. But I can't do that because this is wet still. Okay. With me? All right. And we need to take a little break. So while we take our break, this stuff will, I'll set it in the sun or hit it with the blow dryer. And then we can come back and we can start um, fiddling around with the cube. Okay. With me? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. Break, tech 10, and then we'll come back and keep working a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right, you guys with me? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. All right, so we'll start by putting this back in. Okay, and again, be patient with this because um, if you're double masked, you're gonna have white edges around your stuff. And it's gonna look weird. All right. <clears throat> So now, tackle cube. And the darkest part of our cube is going to be the, the side that's opposite our light source, which is this one here. So we'll do that one first. So this is a gradient that will essentially go from dark to light this way. Okay. A lot of times students will create like an L-shaped gradient, which it's not. It's more of a fan shape.
<clears throat> so for the cube, we spray the edges. Yeah, you're doing one panel at a time. So I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I've taken this piece out, okay? And I'm trying to establish a uh, gradient that goes across that plane with me. So yeah. not the edges. It looks like I'm doing the edges, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually working across it this way. Oh, okay. Well, the edge is going to be, you know, the darkest part. So you have to do whatever to get that done. The weights sometimes get in the way, but. Okay, so you see how it's kind of fan shaped rather than an L? Yeah. Okay, and then again, you gotta look at what you're doing. You can't tell how things are going without doing your peekaboo. So we'll lift this up, lift up our background, right? And we have nice contrast. Okay, does that make sense, you guys? Yes. 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 All right. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna switch to another cube so that we can see how. We want to ultimately develop those panels, right? So I've already done this one, okay, the way that we just did that other one. So I'm going to take this piece out, okay? <clears throat> All right, does everybody understand? So you can see if I lift that up, right? This panel is already done, okay, with me. All right, but because I don't want to stand around and wait for that other one to dry, right? We're moving on to this one that we did last night. Follow me? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. And this side needs to be lighter than this side, right? Yes. Why? Yeah. Because the uh, light is hitting it, hitting it directly. And it's basically the same shape, okay? Because there's light bouncing off the surface up onto this part of the that plane. Does everybody understand? Okay. So yeah. that yep. light hitting here and direct light. Okay. All right. Okay. And I'm going to turn this because I see a little bit of a line developing here. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that, but there's a little white line right along here, and that'll be between my um, panels, and that'll look really weird, okay? And so that's happening because I was spraying at an angle, and this thing was sitting up a little bit, okay? So I'm going to spray from this angle and try to wash that out. I'll get real close, and I have just a tiny bit of material in my brush and I think I can wash that out and maintain my contrast. All right. 
And so now I need something over here. I don't have anything there. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. Okay. So I need to lay something down. And I may find that like, okay, I got to make this a little darker now. Just a little bit. Right along there. Okay, and then I'll look at it and make sure that I still have the contrast that I want. And here's where you got to be patient. Like when you move stuff around, make sure you're not sticking your fingers in there. Okay, with me? All right, now see that white line? Yep. That's no good. Okay. All right, now there are things that you can do to eliminate that, right? So one, I should have sprayed at um, this angle. I just wasn't thinking. <clears throat> All right, um, now it's faint enough right now that I probably could just take my brush and just kind of do like this and, and get rid of some of that, which already it's weaker, right? It's like less visible. You guys see that? Yeah. Okay. And then what I'll need to do is I need to ultimately make this side just a tiny bit darker. But you can see how that thing's coming forward in space now, right? And then if we do this, boom, that's starting to look like a cube. Follow me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. <clears throat> now, Something that is handy, and some of you guys might have some of these things already, are these um, curl quill pens, right? And I'm not saying you need to run out and buy one of these. Um, you can use them if you have them. You don't need to use them necessarily. Um, but they are kind of cool uh, for some of the smaller shapes that you're working with that are kind of hard to spray. Right. So if I take this. Wait, what is that thing called again? It's just a little crow quill pen, like for pen and ink, right? Oh, like a calligraphy pen. Well, well. Yes, but you wouldn't want to use this pen for calligraphy. It's not actually a calligraphy pen. Okay. Um, this is the, going to give you this real nice small dots, okay? And you can stipple some of that stuff out, right? So just with the couple little dots, a few dots that I've made right along the line, I've, you know, pretty well eliminated it. Okay? And if I wanted to have more control over um, the other side where I need more contrast without having to wait. I could switch to a different tip. That will give me little bigger dots. And I can make that darker. <clears throat> just through stippling. But you have to be careful because you can very easily develop a pattern that doesn't really match what you've been spraying and it can stand out and look really bad. So you got to keep in mind that that's a distinct possibility. And then what's nice about these is that the pressure you use changes the size of the dot.
right? And now you can see that really strong contrast on that edge. With me, you guys? Yeah. Right? Okay. And then that's really handy when it comes to um, the cone, right? Because we know the cone is really kind of tricky. Okay. Now, uh, my night class, right, they had in their kit, because that class was a class that I inherited from another instructor, um, they had technical pens in their kit, okay, right, so like Copic pens, okay, um, if you have pens like this, you could use them for what I'm doing right now. Like Micron pens? Yeah. Uh, and so what's nice about them is um, they come in a variety of different sizes, right? So if I want to come in and, and really kind of tune up what's happening at the tip of this cone, I can do that and have extreme control, right? Not just with the size of the dots, but the placement of the dots. That makes sense, you guys? Right. When I lift that up, that'll pop a little bit more from its background. With me? <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Okay. So now, if we want to do, we're kind of jumping around, but we have to because we're we're letting some stuff dry, right? So you know, keep that in mind. You don't have to sit and wait. Just move to something else. So we already did this part of our cylinder. Let's do that part of our cone. And like I said, it's gonna be the opposite because the light is bouncing back at the bottom with me. So if I lift the background out now, that looks more like a cone, right? Yes. Okay. All right, but we wanna give it a little bit of mass so I want to think in terms of our core, our core, right? We have one here and we have one on the opposite side, right? So our shadow is going to go across it that way. Now we need to find that part and put it back in place. This is it. That might be the other, is the other one. So lay that down and it's not curved by the way, right? It is a diagonal line. You see, you guys do a lot of funny stuff where you're bending shadows and whatnot. So now if we lift everything out carefully, try not to smudge this one. There's our cone. That makes sense to you guys? Yeah. Okay. So it's a little darker than the top of that. I could probably go a little darker still. It's all reflected light, so um, yeah, it needs to be a little darker. And that's why you're doing the peekaboo, so you're comparing everything, right? With me? Yeah. Yes. Boom. 
with me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Any questions? Hello? How you doing, everybody? No questions from anybody. Uh, nope. Okay. So what's due on Monday then? This assignment. These four things completed. Correct. And a full scale stencil for the actual composition. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So the sketches that you've been doing, you need to develop that into a actual working stencil by Monday. All right. A lot of work, but you can do it. All right. This doesn't take all that long once you get started. Okay. Um, I, I will look at uh, sketches again today. Um, I'll look at sketches tomorrow uh, as well. Right. Um, by Friday, you should have your your stuff already laid out, okay? And what you wanna do is go from your sketch to a piece of tracing paper and develop the composition in its entirety on tracing paper. That way you can then transfer that to your Bristol board and then you can cut out your stencil out of your Bristol board. Does everybody understand? Oh yeah, I was about to ask. Yes. That. Yes. <clears throat> The reason you want to have it on tracing paper first is so that you have a backup in case you have some kind of a fatal error when it comes to your um, cutting of your stencil or when you start spraying, right? If you spilt your gouache or something like that, you don't want to have to redraw that whole thing. If you have a tracing, you just lay it down, you transfer it again, and you, and you, you cut it out, right? Um, Hopefully your stencil would, you know, not be destroyed in that process. And you're just moving your stencil rather than laying it all out again. But it's good to have that tracing as a backup. With me, everybody? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Just to reiterate, let's say that this is my composition, right? I want to do that on tracing paper. I'm going to transfer that to Bristol board. And then I'm going to cut out every single line. Okay, right. So my composition itself will be the same as this, and then I'll have a half inch board. My stencil of my composition will exist inside that. Follow me. So yes, that's yeah. yes. It's to be the the final twelve inches. All that information is in the. Um, volume, space, and mass module in your um, canvas shell. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the prompt and everything is there. And then I'll post these examples a little bit later today and the video that we made from today's class.